Hello, hello. All right. Thanks for joining me if you're just seeing this show up on your notifications and uh, today I want to talk about uh, my story learning the oud back when I was like 13 or 14 you're going to hear about um, my story my struggles some of the things that I went through learning the oud my first oud that I got and my recommendations for you um, we'll talk a little bit about uh, some tips I have if you want to sound like uh, Hamza Aldin, the um, Nubian oud player. Um, and we'll talk about some questions about some deals that I got going on at Oud for Guitarists right now. We're going to be uh, we're selling ouds plus learning programs. So it's really exciting because uh, if you want to learn buy an oud, now is the time because you can get lessons as well and you can get a nice discount. You can save time and money. So I'm excited to talk to you about that right now. Uh, so let's get into it. So first of all, uh, let's talk about uh, back when I was 12 or 13 year old. Uh, I was obsessed with buying an electric guitar. I was taking uh, acoustic guitar lessons at the time. And so I'd go into guitar shops in town and I'd just take in all the colors and uh, look at all the guitars, check everything out. Everything was so new and special to me. Uh, checking out all the amplifiers, guitar picks, straps, distortion pedals, and I just really, really wanted to become part of that world. I remember around that time, uh, Fender uh, was started making these Squire Stratocasters that were made in in Mexico. Uh, they were a bit cheaper, but they still sounded really good, and they they looked just like the expensive model. So back then, I couldn't really tell the difference. Um, but the coolest thing I saw in these shops were these packages that included an electric guitar, a small entry level amp, and like a guitar book and some lessons and stuff. It was everything you needed to start playing the, the guitar. Uh, I never ended up getting one of these starter packs. I, I ended up buying my old, my friend's old Squire that uh, was made in Korea. And uh, I had an old amplifier that my dad um, had, you know, tucked away somewhere and it had some reverb and vibrato. It wasn't really much at the time, and it, it uh, I'll tell you why, it, it kind of bummed me out later. I was such a newbie to the guitar world, I didn't really know uh, what made electric guitars sound the way they do. Like, I was just a teenager, didn't have too much information. I didn't know that you needed a distortion pedal to sound like Jimi Hendrix did, for example. The first time I plugged in my new electric guitar into my dad's old amplifier, it didn't sound like anything special. It just sounded like a crappy toy acoustic guitar. So it was a huge surprise for me and I learned a lot that way. Um, later on I found out that uh, amplifiers have this knob on it that's called drive or gain. You can turn that up and that'll give you the distortion. Um, 
But had I bought that starter strap package uh, that I saw in stores, I probably would have saved a bunch of money. And at least I would have had been able to turn up the drive volume and get that distortion that I was looking for, you know, in electric guitars. Um, around the same time, I was interested in, in learning Oud too. Um, our family had bought like our first desktop family computer and it came with a program called Microsoft Encarta uh, 97. It's like a, an encyclopedia. Maybe this rings a bell for you, some of you who are around my age. Um, there was a section in the encyclopedia about musical instruments around the world and you could hover your mouse over the world map and uh, when you hovered your mouse over Egypt, um, a picture of the oud would come up and uh, it looked so cool. Um, and when you'd click on a sound clip, it would play a short clip of music that has haunted me ever since. It was Hamza al-Din's rendition of Lama Bada Yatathana. Let me play that for you right now. Uh, this is how it sounded. tip now uh, segue in this story I want to give you a tip about playing like Hamza al-Din I noticed um, after looking at some photos of Hamza al-Din's uh, playing and holding the oud that he uses what looks like a very wide very wide tip uh, plastic risha and another thing that he does is which is a little bit it looks simple but it's actually a very advanced technique and you need to have some uh, control of the oud to create this sound. What he does is he plays really quite close to the large sound hole when he plays. And what this does is create a really warm round sound. And what happens is the, the strings are a little bit looser and uh, more subject to vibration here in this area. So when you strike the notes, the strings vibrate a bit more uh, and get a little bit jangly. And why I call it an advanced technique is because it takes control to be able to play up here. I always recommend beginners start around here because um, it, it's the most standard area to play on the oud, this area. But when you play over here, it softens out everything. Um, along with that and his thick risha, very wide, wide risha that he uses, I think that's what helps him get that sound. play up there um, it the strings are a bit looser so it's a bit tricky to get the right sound out of the oud when you play there so that's why I don't really recommend beginners try that but in the future give it a try get a really wide wide thick risha very round tip make a round tip there and then play very close to the sound hole and you may find that you're sounding a lot more like Hamza al Din's staff so yeah, so that was um, that was the first tune I heard on the oud. 
And uh, that clip from that uh, computer program, it was only less than a minute long. Like it didn't even get to the singing part. Um, but that's all it took to hook me for life uh, onto the oud. Um, back then, finding an oud was pretty much impossible for me, especially at my age. Um, I was actually really surprised that I had never seen the instrument before because I was already uh, familiar with uh, Persian music and I was already playing the Persian santur at the time. Um, I was always dabbling in different instruments. So I was into electric guitar, acoustic guitar. I was playing santur um, back in those those days when I had a lot of time. Um, and But I'd never seen an oud in a Persian ensemble before. It wasn't really that popular back in the 90s. Um, there were some uh, oud players worthy of, of mention in Iran, but the oud didn't really take off in Iran until uh, the late 2000s. So it was basically impossible for me to get an, my hands on an oud in Canada. Uh, but luckily, one year, maybe maybe around 1998 or maybe it was around 2000, I'm not sure now, but uh, one of my best friends was traveling, his mom was traveling to Iran, and we asked her if you can find an oud, if you could bring one back, that'd be, that'd be awesome. Anyway, she did ha end up finding an oud. Um, she had to like walk through the strangest parts of town to find one, and it was really challenging for her. Nobody really knew where to get an oud, um, but in the end, she got me one. Uh, but sadly, it was a really, really bad oud. Like the pegs were stuck, like concrete. The action uh, was ridiculously high, so it was really hard to play. And there were serious cracks in the soundboard, and back then it cost me like three hundred and fifty bucks. And that's 20 years ago. So considering inflation, we're talking about like $500 by today's uh, inflation. But uh, that's not the case anymore. Now, 20 years down the road now, um, we've come a lot, really long way. Um, Nasir Shama, I heard in an interview, he said uh, that we've entered the golden age of the Oud. And I think he's right because the quality and availability of wood technology is such now that... Uh, Luthiers have really taken up um, oud making quite a lot. Um, there are a lot of European luthiers that are making ouds now too. Um, and luthiers are not only uh, growing in numbers, but uh, they're also experimenting, testing and researching, and they're refining their methods, and they're innovating. Um, and now with the internet, we can order an oud online, and we can have it shipped in record time. So the oud world is finally catching up with the guitar world in, to some degree. And uh, with uh, oudforguitarist.com, um, you can actually learn the oud online as well. I know it's still risky for beginners. Like you may have doubts about buying an oud online. And I get it. I still have these doubts when I purchase an instrument as well. I'm always, you know, double checking and making sure that, uh, you know, I'm making the right de the decision. So, you know, there's questions like, what happens if it gets damaged? Can I return the oud? Is it a good oud? How do I know if it sounds good? Yeah. So, um, recently, Oud for Guitarists and uh, Ethnic Musical, we've teamed up to provide you with good quality ouds. Um, and uh, right now, I'm providing, um, through my website, the opportunity to get oud lessons, uh, my online oud foundation program, when you purchase an oud. Um, so I'm going to put that uh, link to that is in the description, but I'll put a link to it here as well in the chat. I'll get uh, to questions shortly. Um, so please do let me know if you have questions. Uh, here's the link to the ouds that we are selling through my website. These ouds are shipped by Ethnic Musical, and when you purchase um, until uh, tomorrow, uh, you get the oud foundation program uh, as part of the deal. You'll save a hundred bucks on the oud foundation program. So we'll get in there into that a little bit sooner. Just want to mention a few more things about uh, Ethnic Musical ouds. Um, I want to mention the most important thing for a, a beginner oud player. Um, the most important thing is comfort and playability and ease of tuning. And uh, this will save you a lot of time. Uh, you don't want to get an oud which you end up having to repair 
which you end up having to spend a lot of time tuning. It's already going to be a challenge to tune your instrument for the first time, especially an oud, which uses friction pegs. So you want to get an oud that the pegs fit well and that they're as easy as possible to work with. And so that's why um, I recommend ethnic uh, musical ouds over other ouds because they're working directly with the factories in Turkey to make them ouds to their specifications. They want them to be well-fitted, hand-fitted pegs. Um, no plastic parts are used. And um, so they really go for that. They also look for something that's going to be playable. So they're looking for the optimal string height from the fingerboard so your fingers don't need to work so hard to hit all the notes. And so Ethnic Musical, they work directly with the oud factories that they work with to ensure that these ouds you know, meet these standards. And so they're, the, they're really the best price that you can get a decent oud. So when you buy one of these ouds, you get hand-fitted ebony pegs, um, for the greatest tuning experience possible. Not saying it's going to be easy tuning your oud, but it's going to be the best experience that you can get for a beginner. Um, you get quality wood pegs and a wood bridge. They don't use plastic materials like some other uh, low-cost Turkish-made ouds. There's a lot out there that use plastic pegs. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of plastic bridges either. And another thing they, they set up for you is quality set of strings. So this means you won't need to change your strings for at least a year or longer. You could keep, the, keep them on for a, as long as a year, maybe even longer. Um, that's really important because you don't want to change your oud strings right away. You don't want to get a cheap set of oud strings uh, on the oud that you buy and need to have to change it you know, in a little while because it is a learning curve to, to tune up and to change your strings. Um, so that's really what these ouds provide is peace of mind that the instrument is good for a beginner and it's a, they're also good for up-and-coming professional oud players. And uh, the Ethnic Musical, the, the guys who run it, uh, they are oud player, players themselves, so they know what, uh, what beginners need. They know what the struggles you've gone through uh, as well in order to learn the instrument. And so they, they look for these key things like playability and comfort. And uh, so there's really no excuse to not start learning to play the oud. Uh, if you've ever been interested, if you've ever fallen in love with the sound of the oud, then there's really no excuse now. You can get a decent instrument for a pretty decent price, and you can also get oud lessons with it. Um, with the oud foundation program, uh, you, can, you can learn everything A to Z about learning the oud. Um, the cost of the foundation program is one ninety nine regularly, but when you buy an oud this uh, this week, uh, you get the foundation program for half price. So you basically get a hundred bucks off um, these oud lessons. Um, the foundation program you'll get oud lesson levels one to four of the foundation program, and those are all the levels that we have. And uh, that's really will give you the enough content to last you for six to eight months, maybe a year, depending on how fast you you uh, pick up music and what your musical background is. Um, so we're offering these prices on uh, ouds and oud lessons when you buy them together um, only until Friday the 18th, the end of the day. Uh, so that's what we're offering for Christmas because we want you to get started and we want you to save a little bit of money. Um, this year on Christmas. So um, the other day, actually, um, someone purchased the uh, one of the ouds um, with uh, foundation program included with it um, and uh, had some questions. I talked to him on the phone and, and whatnot. Um, you know, he, he was curious about, you know, what are the differences between um, some of the other uh, oud selling companies and, you know, um, all that. Um, and... The difference between Ethnic Musical and, and other um, other vendors of, of ouds is that some some uh, oud shops that you find, they're actually building the ouds themselves. Or others are just resellers, so they, they buy and import. And they, they import and export, basically. So they, they're the middlemen, you know. Um, but the guys like Ethnic, Ethnic Musical, they're actually working 
face to face with the people who are building the ouds in the factories. So uh, they know the makers. Um, they also request specific um, types of ouds and specific types of building, uh, building um, uh, specific. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, this the um, specifications of whether they want an oud that's good for Arabic music or Turkish music. They're specifying these things. Um, and they're requesting certain ouds for their market. Now, a lot of people, um, you know, when they're, when, you know, they hear about a Turkish factory making an Arabic oud, you know, they kind of don't really, they're unsure about that kind of thing. So Ethnic Musical has gone to a lot of research to provide ouds that are made for Arabic tastes. And so, um, and to also Arabic size specifications that will work good with um, the Arabic string sets that are out there. Uh, so that's why, uh, that's one of the differences between, you know, uh, Ethnic Musical and other uh, oud vendors out there that are just buying the ouds and shipping them out. The Ethnic Musical is making sure that these ouds are set up so that you just get the oud, you can tune it up and start playing. So there's no problems with that. You don't need to take it in somewhere to get it looked at. They're not going to be hard to play from the from the get go, um, so that's one of the differences. Um, he also had a question about like rishas, like what should I do about rishas? As a beginner, uh, don't worry about rishas for now. Uh, just uh, use the rishas that come with the oud that you buy from Ethnic Musical. They throw in a few rishas uh, so that you can get started and play right away. These rishas will do the job for you. Um, as a beginner it's difficult to know uh, you first need to you know learn to how to play the basics first um, before worrying about you know different uh, rishas and different material um, you'll you'll have everything you need once you you buy an oud from ethnic musical um, how long does shipping take that's another question um, the standard shipping generally depends on your country de de usually takes between 7 to 30 business days with standard free shipping so the shipping that's included on all their orders um, and he had some questions about the foundation program you know uh, what it uh, kind of deals with so the foundation program uh, goes from A to Z basically how to tune your oud how to hold the oud how to play the oud with right hand left hand and it addresses some of the key issues that people beginners tend to have about holding the oud um, especially with the left hand a lot of guitar if you're a guitar player and you're learning the oud um, guitar players like to hold the oud, um, you know, as though they're playing chords. I'll show you this here. So, guitar players tend to hold and finger the notes like this, with a big gap in between here. You don't want that on the on the oud. So, the foundation program makes sure that your uh, left hand is correct, your risha hand is correct and uh, goes through some of those things that uh, guitar players may not get at first. You don't want to be playing like this, you want to be playing like this, where there's always contact here along the fingerboard. Um, and he, want, he also wanted to know, you know, like if we get into the foundation program, if I want extra help or whatnot, uh, what to do. Um, so the foundation program also uh, includes uh, free office hours. Um, every month I'm offering an hour um, an hour per month where you can just join in and ask questions about the oud if you have any obstacles you're going through the the office hours are held on Google Meet so um, you basically you just uh, click the link and uh, you sign in and then uh, you can you can join the discussion right now it's a new thing that I've been doing since September uh, so it hasn't caught on. So right now there's not a lot of people coming out to it. So you, if you do, do join, you may have me all to yourself uh, for some time and you can ask any questions. Uh, you can always email me as well. Um, I'm always available to uh, by email for any students that are enrolled to email me, send me a video of your playing. I can give you some tips and some feedback and, and tell you what uh, you're doing, you should be doing differently or, or tell you what you're doing well as well. Getting some feedback is really important. 
Um, changing oods in the future, like uh, I can also um, refer you to somebody in your area if you you know want to take your oud in to get the strings changed or learn how to do it yourself. Um, but the good thing about buying an oud from Ethnic Musical is that you won't have to worry about that for at least a year, at least. Um, oud strings don't break very easily unless you, you're tuning them too high, um, which is probably not going to happen. Um, and so, you know, your oud strings are going to last a very long time. Um, but uh, if your oud strings, you know, do, if something does happen, um, you can always email me. I can always give you a recommendation on who to go in your area. If there's someone who repairs ouds, um, who can change the, the strings for you, or if you want to learn how to do it yourself, we can always um, help you with that. I have some free tutorials on YouTube as well that can help you with that. So I want to get into how the process works when you order through that uh, site that I linked in the description and in the chat. Um, when you ch you can choose your oud, you purchase the you make your purchase. It'll take you to PayPal, and you'll see our company name, Majnoon Music and Dance, and uh, make your payment. Then you'll get a confirmation that your payment went through via P PayPal. Um, and then you'll get some emails as well to enroll in the course and to claim the course that you got, the foundation program. Um, now, uh, I'll have to send you a separate email to get your uh, address and your phone number in order to ship you the oud. So you'll be getting an email from me and you just include that information and I send all that information to Ethic Musical and they get started with your, your oud order and they get it shipped. Um, and then they'll be providing you with uh, shipping details, tracking number, and all that kind of thing. So yeah, that's about it for me today. Thanks for uh, joining me if you've been listening. And uh, I want to answer any questions if you've, if you've made any questions in the chat. All right, let's see. Don. All right. All right, Don, yes. Oh, that's strange. I don't know why you didn't get a response uh, from me. I'll have to check that. It's possible something went wrong. I don't remember uh, getting getting an email from a Don anyway, but uh, I'll double check for that email again. Uh, I'm glad that uh, uh, the videos have helped you as a nude player. That's great. Uh, are they located inside of the EU? Uh, they're in. They're located in Turkey. I think Musical is based in in Turkey, in Izmir. Uh, Arya Mendoza. Hi, Navid. Is there an Israeli or Palestinian oud that you recommend? Um, I there is a an oud maker in in uh, Israel Palestine that uh, is making really amazing ouds. They're high price and very high quality. Um, the, the oud maker is Peter Sayach, um, and he's making ouds for the likes of Nizar Rohana. Um, there's a long wait list, um, for his ouds. And, uh, I don't know the price of the ouds exactly, but, uh, it's probably going to cost, uh, at least over a thousand dollars, if not, uh, more than that. Um, yeah, I don't know his ouds, but, uh, his oud prices, but you can find Peter Sayach on um on facebook he's got a website also that's being uh, built right now uh so it's not completely accessible um but yeah there's some information peter sayer i'll put, type his name in here so you can find him all right so i think one of the main problems i have as a guitarist is forgetting to use open strings can be a hard habit to break yeah that's a good good point um me as an oud player i love the open string sounds you know it's really important to me to play the open strings and to use them to the max ability um so i always default and i try to wrap i try to play with my technique i try to use the open strings as much as possible um, but that being said, sometimes you have to, you know, play in closed positions or play up the fingerboard to um, to do what you need to do. But uh, yeah, playing the playing the open strings is key because they sound bright and and open and round. And uh, so it's really important to uh, use the open strings as much as you can 
um, the open strings really determine uh, a lot of the technique that you use um, are you from Turkey or I'm I'm originally born in Canada um, my mother is Iranian uh, so I have a quite a strong uh, tie to Iranian culture Persian culture um, my first the first music that I ever learned was Persian music I learned on the sand tour so um, yeah I'm I'm a Canadian born um, but uh, my uh, cultural um, ethnic association is more more with uh, Persian yeah uh, so yeah if you don't have any other questions uh, thanks for joining me today uh, happy to help you if you have any extra questions that you didn't get to ask today just send me an email to support at oodforguitarists.com There you go. And uh, yeah, give me a shout there if you have any questions. And again, the link to buy the Ouds with the foundation program is right here. If you already have an Oud and uh, you're looking for you know extra help and Oud lessons if you're still starting out, Next week, I'm doing a, a, a pack, some packages just on Oud lessons. So just on the um, online Oud programs that I have. So uh, yeah, there's one more question. I have an Oud, but it sounds like echo. Can you help how to avoid it? That's a good question. I'd have to know what you mean by echo. Um, what you could do if you want is uh, send me a, a small uh, smartphone recording of your oud sound and what uh, maybe I can see if there's anything weird about it and you can send it to my email and I can uh, take a listen send you a quick uh, note if I if I can figure out what that sound is but that might be more difficult to um, to ascertain all right, guys, thanks so much for joining, and uh, we'll see you guys next time I have a YouTube Live. All right, bye.